Hello everybody. Today I wanted to make a video comparing my 06 Lincoln Town Car to this 2015 Honda Accord and I have something special this time. I actually have keys to it. It's not often that I get trusted with keys from other vehicles and this is a family member's vehicle, actually my mom's to be uh, specific. And the reason why I wanted to make this uh, type of video is because, so, this is a quite essential quote-unquote American sedan. And that is a quite essential American sedan. Obviously, you know that I am not uh, impartial to my car. But I also uh, can tell you that this car was bought new. And she had some problems with it. And, and she still does. And some of the problems... Uh, that uh, encompass this vehicle are very strange. It's not befitting a Japanese car. So, all right, I actually do have a camera person today, so I'm gonna pause and we will begin. You need to look right underneath, right up here, where my finger is pointing, right here. So this happened this dent happened when um, she actually hit some snow. And this is so strange. So, uh, you know, she was just parking. There was a ton of snow on the ground, like there usually is in Chicago. Uh, and she hit some snow and, you know, nothing, nothing to it. But actually the snow, the fact that she drove over and parked her car on heavy snow, it dented the metal. Have you guys ever seen snow denting metal like that? Now, I have an idea that this is obviously not steel. This is some sort of an alloy. But the bottom line is, I don't think snow versus a fancy Japanese car. Like, look, 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 look. Even right here, I think, well, I think some of it was where my, my hands, but it actually took paint off, it dented metal and everything else. So, not really befitting a fine Japanese car. Another weird problem that's happening with this car is you can see it right here on the bumper cover. This right here, this is not a result of an accident or a scrape or anything like that. This is a 2015 car and the paint is starting like to, to peel. I'm not sure if that's peeling or, or something, but it hasn't been painted over. It hasn't been touched up, but it's like you got this glossy part right here and then paint just started to, I don't know, burn off, dissipate. I mean. You know, my mom is no speed demon, but at the same time, the paint is literally just coming right off. And once again, this wasn't a result of some accident or a scrape, or, and this is not spray down paint. But yeah, it's like, don't know, once again, don't think that stuff like this should happen to a freaking Honda Accord. All right, so under the hood, there's really nothing special, not up here. And I honestly don't even know what engine this is. I think it's like a two point, four four cylinder uh i know these things have a v6 as an option but she she got a uh, four cylinder she had one thing happen to her a couple winters ago where she was just driving home from work this is pre-covid so if you guys remember when people used to come to the office uh and the car all of a sudden almost started to shut down and it went into this limp mode where every dash light inside got turned on and the car, I think it wouldn't shift out of like the second gear. And she got really scared and she limped its way back to the dealership. And they diagnosed that it was still under warranty at the time. So they diagnosed some sort of a computer issue where they just reset the computer. No idea where that computer is. Possibly it's here, possibly it's somewhere else. Don't really know, to be honest with you but it, they reset it and it was fine. But this is the time when the car was still under warranty. It's got 58,000 miles on it right now. And within the first three years, it, that happened. Now it hasn't happened since and she's been driving it. But still, not something you expect from a Honda Accord. Coming back here to the, to the trunk, uh, it's got a decent side trunk. As you can see, it got a lot of kids stuff, obviously uh, grandkids, uh, one being the camera person uh, filming right now. It's very important. So I wanted to point this out. So the trunk right here for a mid, now these are considered mid-sized cars uh, for all intents and purposes. Trunk is pretty good. As you can see, she's got a crate, a bunch of toys, everything is right there. But you know, 
compare it to a modern trunk, it's fine. But why didn't I show you the real trunk? Come, come here. All right, so now coming in uh, to the inside. So this particular one, so it's a 2015 Honda Accord. It's an EXL trim, which basically means it's a four cylinder version. L stands for leather. EX means, you know, it got some extra goodies. It got one of these smart keys. So to start it up, put your foot on the brake, push the red button. I do love the, the red button right here being super sporty right there. Uh, let's see, audio power off. So what is it? So progressing from my 06 Lincoln Town Car, uh, what do we get here nine years later in this quite essential American sedan that you don't get in my 06 Town Car? So first and foremost, I don't actually see a whole lot of difference. Now there is a economy button right up here. You know with a nice little what looks like a pot plant right there you know so there's that you do have a lane departure warning you do have this nice camera so there's a little button on the side stock right there so check this out right here so if I press this button I can see the side and obviously because the door is open you can see uh, it's pointing to a house uh, to a townhouse nearby <laughs> right there all right so but besides that well, check this out so you have this dual side a dual zone climate control which we are about to turn on simply because we're about to cook in here but i have that in my 06 lincoln town car let's see we got sync we have okay we got ac we got that actually let's close the door so uh, here i can i can take over there you go so you got the camera oh check this out that's a that's an awesome shot right there bam <laughs> you got a lincoln town car being reflected in the camera angle of this you see look you, here let me focus on there you see a town car now you don't and now you see a town car and now the town car is moving because the door is moving whoa all right all right, enough of that. I'm sorry, I totally nerded out right there. All right, I got some kids' uh, frogs here. I, uh, oh my God, holy crap. All right, anyway, you got the, the quite essential uh, surgical mask, of course. This is a 2020 after all. You can't, can't live without a mask. So check this out. So we got, we got this weird thing. So this, this is obviously something I don't have in my town car. But, but just look at this. How ridiculous is the fact that you got a screen controlling a screen that's right above that. Now this screen, although it's kind of dusty, but it's okay. You know, this is something that Acura, I think it started with Acura. So I have Acura to blame for this. And then it kind of transitioned back into Honda's. It's like, really, like, is this really necessary? Now that screen, if you could please point up above, like that whole screen is occupied by a little radio by like um oh sorry uh what am i doing here back that whole thing is occupied so i click here and it displays so that whole display is taken up by a tiny little bit of a display now is that necessary no it's not and i know that on a higher up model so there is an exl with navi like the navigation system will um uh will uh, come out there and I know it's flickering right now it's not obviously doing that in real life it's only on, on, on the cell phone screen that it does that so anyway so that's a big waste right there you have stuff like this that's being displayed here and there, that upper screen does absolutely nothing but just display very redundant information now yes I don't have this touch screen anywhere on the Lincoln Town Car but I don't need this like who, who, I, don't, I don't even think she needs this <laughs> I don't think I don't think society needs this Oh, there you go here and then you got the little scrolly wheel right there once again it's useless so all right enough enough said on that so i do like the push button start i don't have that in a town car these things came out a little later and they they did come out on, on um, next generation lincoln's uh, like the mks that, that came after um the the wheel right here i'm missing the little wood piece that's definitely not 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 doing 
any favors. And actually because of the sun, it's starting to wear already up here. And obviously because this is a very high touch point area. Um, you do have uh, heated seats down here, same thing. You do have a little, uh, so got this. I do like the fact that you can leave them on. And so when the car gets uh, turned off, the, this position stays on a town car. I do have heated seats. But, uh, you know, they need to be, it's a toggle, it's not a toggle switch, it's like a push button. Got a little storage there, okay, somewhat useful. You do have a USB port here, which is something that's not exist on a town car. This is a pre-USB type of thing in the, in the cars. But other than that, if I may, just take a look at these gauges right here. So gauges? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they, they try to go for some style. Not quite sure they succeeded. I don't know why everything is like white on black, which you can argue that, uh, you know, in a town car it's black on green, so not really anything special. But you know, it's got, it goes up to 160 miles an hour. So that's not possible. This car is not capable of doing that. So on a town car it goes up to 120, so at least it's realistic. You do get a couple speakers, a couple extra speakers that is, so. We got that going for us. Uh, speakers there, and I think on a town car, these things, see, it's, you can't focus. There you go. So, I think on the designer series, they had extra speakers. But other than that, all right, well, we, it does come with one child. Yes. No, but he was sold separately, so it wasn't included with the price of the car. We should see if it, we should see if it can actually hit 160 miles. <laughs> Someday. Someday when we have nothing else to lose. Got a little storage here. You know, the armrest is kind of squishy right here. The leather. Anthony, what do you think about the leather in this car? It's leather. It's leather. Yeah, that's about it. It's made out of cow? Pretty much. Or a pig. Or a sheep. No, probably not sheep. Maybe a cow or a pig. Back seats, you know, we will jump in a, in a back seat. Now, this one does not have the, um, you know, the middle seat, but we already established in some other videos that the middle seat in the town car is not used, and it's not realistic. So, there you go. The AC does work a little better in this in this car than, than it does on mine, I guess, being nine years younger, you know, serves its purpose. All right, we're gonna move into the back seat and we'll uh, probably wrap this up. All right, but before we go to the back seat, I wanted to take it out for a drive. Uh, I obviously know how my town car drives very well. So let's see how this thing goes. So starting to drive this thing, I haven't driven this car in, in, in a long time, in probably six months. So first I do wanna point out, yeah, the acceleration is a little more brisk. The steering is a, is a bit lighter, but I also hear some grinding noise coming from like the front right. I don't, I'm not sure if it's a tire thing, I'm not sure if it's a brake pad thing. So once again, it's a five-year-old car with 58,000 miles that's boasted to be, you know, this highest standard of Japanese engineering. And I, I don't want to say luxury, but you know, you know what I mean. Like everybody, like every other person has one of these things. But once again, I don't feel it. And I'm not trying to knock this car just, you know, for the sake of knocking this car. But I don't know. There's just something about it where I enjoy driving my 14-year-old car way better. So we're going to take it out on a little uh, higher speed road. We're going to do a bit of a circle so I can kind of feel it out. And I don't know, it just it, it feels like when I drive it, it feels cheap. It's not a cheap, it's not an expensive car by any stretch of the imagination. I think this one was like twenty eight thousand five years ago. I don't know how good uh, she bargained for it. All right, so yeah, it accelerates faster because it's much lighter. It's got a four cylinder versus a V eight for God's sake. So you know, obviously it's, it can be as heavy. It holds the road okay, but I don't know if I can convince uh, the audience through the camera lens that it doesn't drive like a quality automobile. So yeah, yeah, acceleration it does it does go faster than a town car. I don't know what the zero to sixty is. I mean, the the people really care in a Honda Accord, but yeah, it's. Uh, not 
much. Very exciting. Suspension is is okay. Oh, we got fire department. Okay. Yeah, suspension is okay. It's definitely not as smooth. So suspension is more, may I dare calling it sporty, which is something that I never really understood. Why does everything need to be sporty these days? Why can't it be luxury? Why, why does luxury mean sporty? In what alternate universe do we live in? So yeah, well now, now my day is complete. I drove a Honda Accord, not impressed. Despite the fact that it's it's kind of similar, I, I dare I say it's a Japanese version of a town car that's been modernized. Uh, no, it's not it. It is definitely not it. Great. All right. Well, the one piece of technology that I forgot to mention earlier is the backup camera. So, the town car does have those little beeping sensors, but. I do have to admit that actually seeing of how far you are from something and you know it's a much better and then also something that I didn't even know it had is right there there's a button you can change view wow I did not oh my god okay <laughs> now why is this useful I don't know I mean I could see this being useful I could kind of see this being useful this I guess if you want to look immediately underneath your bumper I guess like if there's a bicycle or something or a little kid or a cat I don't know but I, I, I honestly I, until I actually started filming this I had no idea that this feature with the multiple views actually exists and there you go it does tell you check your surrounding I guess that's how you should check your surroundings all right oh there you go we'll leave it at that back seat we have two child seats right there we do have some uh heat and AC vents out here nice we do have an armrest really nice and squishy you know this leather quality like like what my camera person said yeah it's leather like you can't you can't call it a bad leather but it's not a good leather either so here's what I'm gonna do since I can't yeah well look I do fit I'm actually surprised that I do fit back here so, which proves with these two seats is that three people could comfortably sit on the outer edges. For the middle person, I'm actually surprised how much room is, is uh, down back here. But, yeah, you know, my, my feet actually can fit here. And these air conditioning things are blowing right in the middle of between my legs. So, I can't, I can't call it uncomfortable now. Very nice. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna climb out now. I'm not happy anymore. All right, now I wanted to end the video on just saying that I'm not impressed with a 2015 Honda Accord, but I couldn't take the opportunity, since I do have a camera person, to go for a drive and get filmed okay. driving mine. All right. So, yeah, the AC is not as cold. Yes, I, I do have to admit. Uh, it is cold, but just not as cold. I'm filming it at a time where I don't have any dash lights. I finally fixed the seatbelt pretensioner thing where the airbag light is no longer off. And you know, I forgot to mention it on the other car. Lack of wood. I love this wood. This wood is awesome. Need, need to have more wood. All right, so here we go. I'm just gonna go for a drive. It's a nice Saturday. Oh man. Oh man. Now piloting this thing going backwards, it's it took a little getting used to. It is probably the longest car I've drove. I'm sure it's the biggest sedan that I've ever owned. My lacrosse was uh was much shorter. But holy moly. Oh, look at that HHR over there. That's something new. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Now, it, it, when, when I hit the gas on here, kind of to draw a comparison now that I'm right off of that Honda Accord, yeah, it, it's much slower. But, you know, it moves with purpose. It doesn't brake as well, I got to admit, although the rear brake pads were changed 
uh, this past December, so I'm filming this by the end of August. Uh, so, no, I'm sorry, the, the rear brakes were done in February. What am I talking about? February. So six months ago, that were rear brakes. And at that time, a uh, mechanic told me that the, the front brake pads and rotors, they're new. So they must have done them at the dealership um, when I bought the car last December. So, the smoothness of this car is ridiculous. Mm. If I fall asleep at one point, consider this a success. So let's do a little more thorough test drive of this car, although I've done plenty of them, but anytime I get to drive it, it's a happy day for me. So yeah, just hitting the gas. Yeah, like it pulls, like it pulls strong. But it's not, it's not brisk. It's more of a, you know, I'll get there when I get there. And how dare you uh, hurry me up. But these bumps, yeah, that car, the Honda Accord suspension is, it's not bad suspension, but it's, everything is sporty. Sporty, sporty, sporty. Whatever happened to hitting the bump and just being slightly inconvenienced by the bump rather than being shooken up by it. So that's what I'm talking about. It's these type of cars that are unfortunately dying. And you can kind of show in up front there that this is not the best road, actually, by far from it. There's construction happening out there. There's cones everywhere. It's not a very pleasant road to drive. And if we were driving that Accord right now, we would be shooken up a lot worse than this, I tell you. This one kind of just goes, you know, floaty. And I like floaty. I don't know why car manufacturers stopped caring about the, the, the big old float that this car is. And what do you think? AC. You think AC is all right? I mean, we're not dead yet. So. <laughs> well, that's a good point. We're not dead yet. When anybody asks you, uh, hey, how are you doing? You're like, well, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> all right. So I think... We can wrap this up by saying that, so you have two cars. You have a Honda Accord, very popular, obviously, very, actually it's everywhere, it's everywhere. Every other car is either a Camry or an Accord. But, I can say these cars are very good, at least for me. This is the car for me, I stand by it. It is 11, 11 right now, and I think we gotta end this. Thank you everybody for liking, subscribing. This is me. This is my camera person. Thank you, Anthony. All right. Uh, this is a Lincoln Town Car. This is some wood. Keep on liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you next time.